What if giants could do redstone? Now, I know some of you are currently thinking, what on earth is a giant? Well, a giant is... is... is giants. It's, it's very big. And to truly drive home how big these things are, here's a melon for scale. Yeah, they're pretty massive. You can barely even see the melon. So what would happen if one of these giants could do redstone? What sort of base would they build? First things first, entrance. I've got a location. I have a giant. Now I need to build the door around the giant. And I kind of want to do this in what I would describe as a Looney Tunes style way in that it's in the shape of the giant. So I think something like this should do the trick we've got a little gap for the arms it kind of goes up and around like that yeah after a little bit of fiddling this is absolutely perfect and at the widest point it is seven blocks wide which is more than doable with flying machines okay how close is our hitbox so if we had okay i'm assuming yeah i can't place any blocks there so that means that anything past this point is going to start interacting with our giant but thankfully i Again, that shouldn't be a problem because our last piston can probably go here. Ah, oh, the observer though. The observer needs to go somewhere. Interesting. I think we could probably extend it out a little bit further. How many blocks is that? It's five, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, easy. Right, let's give this first little one a test. So, that is our door open. And... That is our door closed. I mean, that is that is plain sailing, isn't it? Don't you just absolutely love it when things in life are plain sailing? I tell you what, though, I will never get used to the sound of honey blocks being placed. It's probably the most disgusting thing in the game. I've just realised I've been a complete moron. I was, like, on autopilot, and I've designed a door that would entirely stick to itself. If only there were four colours of sticky blocks. So let's go back to the drawing board. But it was only a very quick visit to it because we're keeping things fundamentally the same. I've just made the door slightly bigger, and I've pushed our giant over half a block so he's still centered and actually looks a lot better so now i just need to hook all of these up which should now all be done oh dear oh dear i didn't back it up but now it's all fully rebuilt and with some slight timing adjustments everything all seems to be working it has taken me an embarrassing amount of time to build this very simple door but i'm hoping now that it is done it should be yeah that that is incredibly satisfying that is, that is about as satisfying as I wanted it to be. I'm very pleased with that. So now I decorate. Gosh, this is by far the hardest part of the video for me. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Nearly there. Definitely in the final stages. And done. This has taken me a very long time, but I have to say the end result is looking really cool. And I've made way for some little things that we're now going to build redstone systems for. Imagine coming over the hill and seeing that though. Seriously, I'm pretty proud of this thing. Okay, enough of that fancy pants building stuff. Let's crack on with some serious redstone work. Feeding tubes. I'm assuming a mob as big as a giant would need to eat an awful lot of food. So we're going to provide it to him in the form of cows being sent up through these pipes here and meeting a rather untimely and horrific end in this chamber before their innards are spewed from the ceiling into this giant's mouth. Sounds delicious. Why can't you just eat vegetables, dude? Then you wouldn't look like that and I wouldn't have to build this horrific machine. So I have both sets of cow dispensers set up. That is ticking and this one is ticking as well. Please don't flood and break any of my redstone. This is looking pretty good. It's also looking really good from the outside. And now that we have both sides done, let's see how well our little cow dispensers actually work. <laughs> oh what whoa wow that's not that's that's probably not meant to happen why is this side working so well what happened over here did i leave a hole i i definitely left a hole didn't i excellent i would definitely count that as an 8 out of 10 success though i mean this might just be one of the funniest looking systems i've ever created and it seems to work really quite well so some of the cows do get a little bit stuck up here but eventually, I imagine they'll make their way across. If not, they'll drown and die. Which I guess is fine. So now the question is, do we set fire to these cows or do we blow them up? Or do we set them on fire and then blow them up? There really is only one correct answer to that question, isn't there? Does our cow catch fire? That is the question. Cow comes in. Oh my goodness. It's almost too effective. That cow got absolutely destroyed. This is good. 
This is good. A little bit of fire. And then he, he's put himself out. He's a smart cow. Sadly, his smartness is not going to protect him from the main event, which of course is being blown up. And I must say, this might just be the messiest and ugliest redstone I've ever done in my entire life. If this is bad. But the concept is simple. The same circuit that detects the cows to set them on fire will also detect cows to blow them up. <laughs> That's a ridiculous sentence. But of course, you can't just have TNT being dispensed all over the place. So this right here is a cooldown timer to make sure that our TNT has been dispensed, fully blown up before another piece of TNT can be dispensed. Because we don't want too many explosions up in here. Right, let's give this thing a whirl. It didn't work because of an oversight. That oversight being I forgot I was stupid. But now we should be back in action. Press button, feed the giants. Okay, the cows are going up in what I will forever think is the most ridiculous looking system in the world. And now lots of them are catching fire. Okay, okay, the fire system is working well. The explosions are also seemingly working quite well. I, I mean, this is awful. This is awful in a number of ways. Our, our giant is being fed. He's not even eating it. Look at look at everything that's going on above you, dude. The least you could do is consume this stuff. Oh my goodness, it's, it's terrible. Terribly successful. Oh, I spoke too soon on the successful front. I spoke very- I tried to make a small modification, <laughs> it's not gone well. So let's move on. This one's a small one, but I really want to be able to look the giant in the eye. So I'm looking at these stairs right here, and I'm thinking if we could push them up, let's say probably around about one, two, three, four, five, six blocks? Maybe even seven blocks? Then we can actually have a conversation with the dude. Now, I think I have a way to do this, making use of an old cube hamster circuit that I'm really hoping still works. Bad news, couldn't get it working below ground, but let's see if I can get it to work above ground. Yep, that is definitely doing what I want it to. It's so broken. <laughs> I mean, if I, can, if I can control this, we might be onto a winner. But goodness gracious me. Is it going to be difficult to control? Control test number one. Hmm. Control test number two. Hmm? Has that just... That's kind of just worked-ish. Press the button again. Maybe everything... Oh my goodness. That's, that's pretty good. I just need a little bit more pulse extender action. And I think... Ah, too much pulse extender. A lot of time later. I mean, seriously, look at this mess. This is probably some of the worst redstone I've ever done again. And that's the second time I've said that in this video, which is kind of scary. But it is now all working. If I hit the button and walk over to our little honey blocks, they get pushed upwards and we can speak to the giant. We're kind of up towards eye level. He still, he still looks very big. But we're at least closer to him. It's a thousand times better than being down here. And obviously to make our little honey block pillar go away, we just have to hit the button again. Everything gets retracted down onto the floor and then it kind of does some funny stuff down at the bottom and eventually it sorts itself out. I would say that's a massive success. So let's move on to arguably what is the most challenging part of this redstone build. Hopefully you've noticed by now that a giant is essentially a scaled up zombie. So what I want to do is create a giant shrinking device. So this is going to involve pushing our giant into another room. So I'm not going to do any command block stuff. I don't want to kill the giant and then resummon it because that's not particularly exciting. I am going to push the giant into another room and then get a zombie to appear where the giant used to be. And that's going to happen behind closed doors. So it's going to sort of be like a magic trick, a really stupid and silly magic trick. Now the hitbox for our giant is almost exactly four blocks wide. So I think if I put some packed ice on the floor, and then just launch the giant backwards through an open door back there, then we can put him into a little compartment. And then all we need to do is make our little zombie pop out. And then of course we just need to do the reverse when we want to unshrink our giant. I have a box around me. Right, let's get to work. Oh my goodness, there was a ton of giants there. How many giants were there? <laughs> what? <laughs> when did that happen? So my command block to summon the giant is here. I must have accidentally powered it at some point. And we just have tons of giants now. I really hope that this giant travels back a long way. Okay, so there is the hitbox. So if I hit this button here, 
Yes, that has worked absolutely perfectly, okay? So I'm gonna have one of these on this side. There's also going to be another one on the inside of here, which is going to do the reverse. It's going to launch our giant into this chamber. On this side, it's quite a lot easier than the one on this side because this one has to be hidden in the floor. So now it's time for the piston door, which this one should be quite nice and simple. We've just got a bunch of double piston extenders all stacked up, moving slime blocks about. So now we have the closing and opening. Sweet. That has now been mirrored on the other side, and I think we can all agree these doors always look absolutely awesome. And now I've also hooked up all of the timing circuits, so in theory, we might have a working system here. If we get ourselves a giant, when I hit this button, our giant should pop through and get stored in this storage chamber. Well, I think it's safe to say that has gone remarkably well. We've just made our giant disappear from the chamber, and then if I press the button again, the giant should reappear back where we started. Okay, we need a little bit more delay. That modification has been made. Button press. Giant. Doors closed behind. And he is absolutely in the correct place. Yes! <laughs> this has actually worked! So when I hit this button, the doors have to close, that circuit needs to fire, we then need to get ourselves a zombie popping out, and then the doors need to open. And the same thing goes for the unshrinking of the giant. I also want to add some animations and sound effects into these redstone lamps. Still quite a lot to do, but our big door circuit is now hooked up to the shrink the giant circuit, so that's part one completed. Redstone lamps are starting to work, and they look very fancy. I also now have the little tune that plays, and now that the zombie circuit is in, I think we might be done. So it's time for the great review. Here is our giant's temple. Now, if we hit this button right here, that will open up the door, revealing our big fella. I mean, look at him. He's looking fantastic. He's also looking a little bit hungry, so if we hit this button, then that will feed our giants with what I can only assume is about a billion cows. Now, they're going to get set fire to and also exploded up in the killing chamber there. <laughs> <laughs> and all of their drops are going to be fed down to this guy. I mean, this is potentially one of the most ridiculous circuits I've ever built, and I've built a lot of ridiculous circuits in my time. Clearly, we fed this guy a little bit too much. In fact, I'm actually going to ask him, you know, did we feed him too much? It's a little bit awkward talking to him from down here. So if I hit this button, that allows me to get up more towards eye level so I can actually have a conversation with the dude. But if speaking to a 12 meter tall zombie is still too frustrating for you, then you can hit this button right here which will shrink our giant. You can hear all of the note blocks kicking in, redstone lamps switching on, and <laughs> there he is. There he is, and he's he's on fire. He's immediately caught fire. He, he's immediately caught fire, and he's coming for John. <sighs> I mean, that was... That was a very short life that our little giant just lived there. <laughs> Thankfully, through the power of redstone, we can actually bring our giant back from the dead. Everything just kicks in, doors close, and... There he is. The big boy has returned. Now one very small detail that I want to mention before we go. These redstone lamps on this side do actually work. It just seems like my computer can't handle the right hand side of redstone lamps. I don't know what's going on. Oh, hello, we've got another small, small giant. So there we go. That is what would happen if giants were able to do redstone. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.